Welcome back to Flip World History. We spent last week focusing on Rome, along with the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. This week, we're going to look at what the rest of the world looked like during the time of Rome. Today, we're going to focus on the Americas. First, let's talk about how people came to the Americas. Let's go look at the map. If there's a place you gotta go, I'm the one you need to know. I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. No, no, no. Not that map. This map. Unlike Africa and Asia, or Asia and Europe, the Americas are separated from the other continents. So, how did they get here? Well, there are two main theories. These are known as the land bridge theory and the coastal route theory. Archaeological evidence tells us that humans have been here in the Americas for the last 14,000 years. The land bridge theory is that during the last major ice age, there was a land bridge between Asia and North America. Now, how's that possible? Well, let's talk science for a minute or two. Remember the water cycle from sixth grade? The idea that rain and snow fall on the land, the rain rolls into the streams and rivers, the snow melts, flows into lakes and oceans, where it evaporates, and then returns back as rain over the land again. During an ice age, moisture falls as snow onto the ground, where it piles up. As water continues to evaporate from the oceans, well, that drops as more snow, and the oceans slowly lower in level. The result was that the air between Siberia and Asia, and Alaska and North America, was no longer filled with water. The Bering Strait was, in fact, now the Bering Bridge. This was exposed land covered with ice and snow. This allowed wildlife and humans to travel between the two continents. Here's a graphic showing how the area of the world would have looked then. The green represents the land of Asia and North America, while the two tan colors show the land that was exposed due to the Ice Age. The coastal route theory was proposed by historians, but then viewed as unlikely. People didn't think they had the technological advancements of the era to have boats and to travel along the shore. However, more recent evidence, archaeologically, tells us this is in fact possible. Now back to the map. So the map illustrates the coastal route theory. It shows how the early peoples could have used boats and followed the coasts along Asia up across to northern Asia, into northern North America, and down along the shore to travel. There's also evidence which indicates that Polynesian peoples traveled on the lower route shown on the map, hopping from island to island until making the larger leap to South America. Now, evidence exists for both theories, and they don't need to be a contradiction to each other. Both are possible and could have happened at different times. So, who was the first person to discover America? Well, you've been told for years, it was this guy, Christopher Columbus. We'll come back to Columbus later in the course, but the first people to arrive in the Americas came from Asia almost 14,000 years before the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria sailed the ocean blue. The earliest people that we know of living in the Americas are a group known as the Clovis people. The Clovis people are called that because their points, the arrow and spearheads, were discovered outside of Clovis, New Mexico. The Clovis people themselves have been linked genetically to 80% of the native peoples of the Americas. Clovis points look like this. They show that the edges were flaked on both sides. This was done by striking it with a, with a rock or antler to chip away a piece of the blade, then turning it over and doing the same on the other side. This is a slow, involved, methodical process. The blades have a curved shape, while the bottom was flattened and smooth. This flat, smooth area was designed to make it easier to attach the blade to the shaft of a spear or the handle of a knife. The Clovis civilization collapsed around 12,000 years ago. Historians aren't positive, but there are two prominent theories. The first, the Clovis killed all the large animals, like mammoth, and left them with no resources, and the society collapsed at that point. The second is that a second small ice age occurred in the same time period, and this caused the ecology around them to again kind of fall apart and collapse, and they couldn't survive. So in the time of Rome, the Americas contained four distinct population areas, North America, Central America, South America in the rainforest, and South America in the Andes. While these groups started from the Clovis people, each of them was unique, and they adapted to the environment around them. Starting in North America, in the eastern half of the continent, from the Gulf of Mexico to the Great Lakes, 
the Hopewell culture had a vast trade network across their territory. They had a socially stratified society with an inherited class system. What does that mean? It means that if you were born to a certain level in the society, it was very hard to get out of that. They were stratified. It was a structure to it. So that if you were born to, you know, to the wealthy nobility or the, the priest class of the group, you were oftentimes going to stay in that same structure or same area. They cremated almost all of their dead, reserving burial for only the most elite of their society. They were also known for building large earthen structures. Due to the lack of large-scale stone deposits in the area, the Hopewell built with packed earth, carried in large baskets. The city of Cahokia in modern Ohio was the grandest of the Hopewell societies and was in fact the largest city in North America above Mexico. Here's a picture of what remains of the tallest of the structures in Cahokia. This is known today as Monk's Mound. It is as tall as a 10-story building. The city of Cahokia itself is believed archaeologically to have had over 130 raised mounded structures across the city. In the American Southwest, there were many tribal groups. While some had established societies with a focus on agriculture, many, in fact, were nomadic hunters. The environment in that area, much like today, was vast and dry and required significant irrigation to make agriculture work. The people in this area used clay bricks baked in the sun to build, have a long history of making elaborate baskets and weaving complex patterns. Now on to Central America. During the era of Rome, there was one dominant group in the land of Central America, the Olmec. The Olmec were the first large civilization in the region. They started building large pyramid-like structures. The Olmec culture and language would spread through the region and as they started to wane in their power, other groups would rise up, building upon their traditions. On the islands of the Caribbean, the Arawak migrated from island to island. In later centuries, they would mix with the Taino and Caribe groups. Meanwhile, in the South American rainforest, people of the rainforest were known as the Arawak. These are the same group that would eventually leave the basin of the Amazon, travel north, and populate the islands of the Caribbean one by one. Their villages were built with fortified outer walls, which centered on a circular plaza. That center of the village was a common meeting place, an area for all social contact. They were a society that was heavily involved in agriculture, relying on manioc, a form of yuca. Lastly, in the Andes Mountains of South America, the Shaban civilization developed and later evolved into the Moki, which later evolved into the Inca. We'll come back to the Inca at a later lesson. The Shaban had stone structures and temples with elaborate textiles and pottery. It was the Shaban who were believed to have domesticated the potato with hundreds of different varieties. The potato, a vegetable with an incredible range of uses. Let's hear what Gollum and Sam have to say on the subject. We need a few good taters. What's taters, Brussels? What's taters, huh? Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. We'll come back to the role of the potato in the Columbian Exchange in a later lesson. So Rome was viewed as being more advanced than the American societies I talked about today. At the same time, what is advanced? What's that mean? Every society likes to view themselves as being advanced. However, with all their advancements, Rome still underwent a collapse. Then again, all the sites of today also at some point would collapse. We'll come back to the Americas at a later lesson. So again, thanks for watching. Remember, be proud of who you are, and I'll see you in class.